Hey everyone, uh, we've got a very special guest this week, and I say that every week, but uh, now welcome to Pearls of Wisdom. I'm Steve Renoff, Deadly Choices Ambassador. Our special guest is very special. It is our uh, Deadly Choices Ambassador, Taliqa Clancy, Olympian, silver medalist, and how good is that? And so proud that, uh, you know, we get to be a part of, a little bit of part of this, what this, this young girl has achieved. So look forward to having a chat uh, when we come back. Hey, Taliqa, what about you and Maria Faye? Show us your uh, silver medal. Woo Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. That, that, I still that is, can't believe it. That is amazing. Uh, what, what you you achieved personally, and I know it was, it was a team thing, but uh, for you personally, uh, and how's it how's it feel? Like, give us some idea. Like, I know you're in a hotel room, but by yourself. Um. Oh, honestly, it's kind of crazy. Like, I have moments of like where it's just so surreal. And then it's just like I just get overwhelmed with um, pride of like what we've been able to achieve. So left last night I definitely slept with it by my side. So it right. stays very close to me at the moment, that's for sure. Yeah, how would you guys, you, you got a little bit of time to celebrate, but obviously uh, just after and between coming home. Um, so how would you go there? Yeah, I definitely took the time to, to celebrate, that's for sure, you know. Um, all athletes have uh, expressed this during the time of the Olympics that the Australian team was just so tight, you know, like so much support. We all just were there for each other, rallied around. I think, you know, even though COVID was tough, but I think that was um, a special part that we all experienced together it was that tough preparation. So as soon as we got down there, it was just like massive support and was just able to take that time to, unfortunately, my family couldn't be there, but just even being able to do video calls and celebrate and, it was definitely probably the most messy video call ever, but it was it was a special way that I was able to celebrate with them. Oh, that's amazing! And uh, let's talk about your family. And um, you know, I, I know a little bit of your history and um, support. Just give us an idea of the support that you have had from your mum Shannon to your grandfather and grandmother, and and the whole family, the extended family. Oh, it was. They have been there through the whole crazy journey. I think that's a special part of getting your medal. You take that time to, to reminisce because it didn't just happen in the last few years. It started from when I was just a young little girl, just obsessed and loving sport. And it's, it's all that moment has led to this. So every opportunity that they said yes, every um, time mum hopped in the car with me and took me all over <laughs> all over Queensland, <laughs> you know, that's that's the, the part which... Um, yeah, that's what really like what this medal like symbolizes all in all in one. It's just it captures all those moments that they've had my back and support. So you're never really truly celebrating just yourself. Um, it's yeah, it's it means it means so much. They've just been there for me the whole time and and encouraged me and pushed me. They always you know said yes, even though you know we had to fight. We were definitely not the richest family, but mum saw something special and she wanted me to have every opportunity. And so they all worked extremely hard to help me get to here. Yeah, how good is that that your mum did realise that? And and you, you could have taken a different track as well, you know, you could have been in a different sport. Um, but that, I think it was the story goes it was just an opportunity came up for you in, in volleyball or whatever it was and you took it. Yeah, 100%. I think that's what um, my family has always done, especially mum. Like did, I did every single sport under the sun really. <laughs> like, yeah. But as soon as, you know, if I kept getting opportunities to play a representative sport, would we just said yes and, and we just kept going and it was just so crazy that this is the sport. You wouldn't believe it. A girl from King Arroy is playing beach volleyball. I wouldn't have believed it. I didn't even know what it was at Sydney 2000. Never heard of beach, beach volleyball or indoor volleyball like in my whole life, but it did not take long for me to fall in love with this sport. Well, everyone and not, not just King Arroy uh, know who you are now and the whole the whole world, around, especially around beach volleyball and what you've done. So that that's amazing and let, let's talk about the competition. Uh, so watched a lot of the games running up to that. And, and look, that, it was a pretty tough schedule. And not only that, um, I thought you looked comfortable that you are going to win those games. But just give us an idea of the heat. It looked really hot there. Yeah, we already knew like in preparation and, you know, um, that Tokyo was going to be quite hot. So we do a lot of heat preparation even before we even get to the tournament. So we can really prepare ourselves like the week before we're in Switzerland and we we're just very fortunate enough that our Airbnb had a 
had a sauna, so we're already doing that heat training um, leading in. And then as soon as we get down there, we're making sure we're doing some sessions during the days during the day. So um, by the time the tournament started, we felt like we already climatized a fair bit, which was good. But you know, it's so important, even if you're handling the heat okay, that you are doing those heat strategies. So you would have seen a lot of us. Um, putting putting towels over us and then eating slushies the whole time. People were so confused what we were eating, but we we're eating the slushies to keep our to keep ourselves cool. So, yeah, it was pretty hot. And and obviously, you know, every team there's the best team in the world. We all know each other so well too, because we all compete against each other regularly on world tour. So, you know, there's no surprises. There's nothing new. So it's whoever was there and had the best teamwork. I think is what really wins the the Olympics. Um, because, you know, everybody's just so tense and so nervous. So it's kind of crazy. You would think the Olympics is the best volleyball that you see um, from all of us, but it actually is the most nerve-wracking. So if you go to World Champs or another Down World Tour, you probably see a little bit of a higher level game, but you can just see that a little bit. Others might not see it, but there's that little bit more tension yeah. um, than there usually is with all of us. Yeah, look, uh, you know, talk about it. Talk to people too, because they might not realise it. You do do the world circuit. I, I think the last time uh, before you came on board with us, I saw you at the, the Commonwealth Games, and um, but you were straight off overseas, and it was this is all preparation for the Olympics, wasn't it? You're running into the Olympics. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, the Olympic year it's not just in one year. Like our Olympic qualification process goes for eighteen months. So us straight after Com Games, you know, that was very early in Marifa and I's partnership. So we had one year to kind of find that gel and click and um, get that going before Olympic qualification starts. So, yeah, so straight away after Com Games, we head straight, to, straight to, to China to continue our world tour and then come back and then after that head straight to Europe. So, you know, like that's just my normal life and I absolutely love it. I hope COVID can allow me to have more events next year. Um, so yeah, you know, like it's such a long period of time and now Paris is only going to be three years away. So it's not, again, it's not a long time until I've got to start getting back out there. Hey, also too, just on that, um, you, you do, you get, yeah, when you get the opportunity, um, you know, obviously prior to COVID, you used to get your, you know, your, your family over to try and spend some time with you on that circuit as well. Yeah, for sure. I think that was the, probably the, definitely the hardest part of, of this Olympics was not having the family and friends with us. Um, that was, yes, yeah, so after every win, we were like quickly running to the FaceTime to try and talk to them. But yeah, not being able to, to hug them was like really definitely the hardest part of, of, of yeah. the Olympics. Well, that, that's what makes this medal so special. And um, look, this is your second Olympics, obviously Rio. Um, explain that the what it felt, the difference. It must be in a different feeling. I don't know. Olympics, Olympics, I know, but from Rio through now to Japan, was there much of a difference? Oh, a complete difference. Like it was, yeah, it was crazy. As soon as COVID hit and the world kind of shut down, it was hard to like have, you know, your preparation automatically just looks totally different to the last one. And that was a real big battle for me. I had a lot of struggles even just with mental health in that period of time because I was just like, I just, you know, that preparation just didn't feel the same. I didn't, wasn't able to, you know, have enough competitions that I would have liked to feel really strong about my performance. So that was like a real big battle. So it was so crazy. Like it was hard not to compare both. I think, you know, Rio, I made it to the quarterfinal too. And I, my expectation was to do better, like, you know, to, to make a semi final, to come home with a medal was the only way that I was going to improve that result. So that also was a pretty heavy part of, of my expectations and learning how to deal with that. Like I didn't expect that to be so, that kind of shocked me how difficult that was of, of how much expectation I was putting on myself. So yeah, they're totally completely different, but I think, you know, I was 24 then and now I'm 29. So it's that all that experience just kind of comes together. Yeah, you, you've done a great job there. And uh, obviously before you, you traveled, um, you know, the, obviously with COVID happening and that, you, you got your two shots, you got your, couple of shots here through our AICS clinic here, here in Brizzy. So uh, just explain the importance of that to obviously to yourself, um, you know, your family and community, what that means. Yeah, you know, it's extremely important to that I was able to receive my shots. You know, um, it was it's not just for travel. You know, I want to protect my family. I have a lot of high risk people in my family as well. So, you know, going out and getting that shot definitely made me feel um, 
better because because I am coming in now and I'm a bit more higher risk because of, of or higher chance of you know exposure to to COVID. But I think irrelevant of that, I would definitely straight away go out there or do anything to pr- to protect community. And I think you know it's so important um, showing the times now, coming home and and having travelled. It is so important to to get that to get your vaccinations. Yeah, a great message there, and uh, thanks for that. Um, obviously, uh, while you you know while you're away, uh, Brisbane got announced the 2032 uh, Olympics. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you'll be competing then, but uh, what's what's I your, will. you will <laughs> yes. What's your message to up and coming? young people who are looking at going into your sport and or any sport and, and got that target for 2032? You know, the Olympics is is so special. It's so hard to describe, but the journey that you you, you start when you become a, an athlete is so special. You know, you um, you would know too, you know, you make, you meet your best friends, um, yeah. you know, and that's, and that's incredible, that hard work that you all get to do and not just by yourself, you celebrate with your family and everybody. So I just encourage everybody to go out there, be active. You might find a sport that you absolutely love and, you know, who knows, you could be sitting here with a medal like me. It's just an absolute dream. I remember being a kid watching the 2000 Olympics, watching Kathy, and straight away I knew I wanted to be an Olympian. But the one thing that even before that was that I just loved being active and and love playing in team sports. And now I have some of my best friends and, you know, I'm just so lucky and such a blessing to even put on the green and gold to be a part of the bigger team. You know, there's, yeah, it's just, I, yeah, I encourage everybody to just go out there and try because it's going to be an absolute buzz here in Brisbane and it'd be even more special if you get to be in the green and gold. Oh, that's great. And hey, look, look, once again, can I just say on behalf of the Institute for Urban Dangerous Health, Deadly Choices, all our Deadly Choices ambassador and staff, congratulations. We're so proud of you. And, you know, we all watched and, you know, you did such a great job and you should be so proud of yourself. Thank you so much. Can't wait to come out. Yes, show us that again. <laughs> there it is. Well done. Thank you, Taliqua. Thank you.